Hallelujah. There is nothing more excellent than the praises of Yah as He commands Israel. You that say that it is a repetitive vocal sound of the songs until that one becomes real to me, then I will sing it day and night. I have no compunction with that. You may, but I have none at all. You can't sing that song all day long to me. Let everything that hath breath, we must brach ar abba, we must shim cha, we must praise him with the greatness of all of our might, our abilities. We must do that when he commands us, Yisrael. And so if he gives us breath, not only do we do with the kara or the voice that is excellent, it is loud, but we should also praise our Abba for his mighty acts that he has caused you to be alive this morning. There's so many that did not reach the destination that they had planned out in their minds. They did not awaken this morning or yesterday or the day before that or the past week. And there were so many that contemplated their activities for the next day or the next week and they're nowhere to be found today. So I do barak him for breath this morning as he all Kedushim would say, we're going to praise him on the loud symbols with our voices, with our deeds, our actions, the activities of our love. We're going to praise our Abba because it is vitally important not just to him, but unto him, unto us. So we praise him on the timbrel and our. We need to learn how to dance before Yah. I'm not ashamed to dance. That's right, Mama. Hallelujah. When I was in the world, I, I, I would throw down on the floor. You understand? And so I can praise them in my dances, as Zachain Bidamin says, in the moving of my feet. We should praise him above all things. One of the most vital aspects of Almighty Yahweh is that we praise him for his mighty Gadol, his greatness. That cannot be numerically determined how many breaths of breath have you breathed from yesterday till today. You don't even consider that. It don't even cause our minds even the small things that we think are small. And yet they are tatamont of great importance and of extreme value. That we breathe and the breath of his ruach, the life of his testimony in us, keeps us alive. I will not complain about anything. I say often, as I said to the Ak the other day, that the greatest strength I possess and the most matured nature of me what I believe is a viable essential. When you began to talk like that, people began to go to the spiritual identity to think or presuppose that they are spiritual. But they're not spiritual. My greatest attribute that I possess that Yah has granted unto me, the greatest thing that I possess is my ability to work and labor without complaining i've always been that way and i'm talking about physical work i've always been able to work to labor and because of that i have not need for any man to teach me how to build how to use a square 
how to erect a building from a young lad I could do that and it's the truth I know it's difficult to believe from a young boy I could build so that's my greatest attribute as far as that willingness to work and to do without complaining and to do with the fervor of zeal and zest. I don't have to talk when I'm working. I like to work. I don't get bored when I'm working. I like to work. Because it is one of the most vital essentials that God grants unto man. Until he sends that great flow of sweat out of his ponim, he hasn't worked. And that's the truth. He hasn't worked. He has toyed. He has played. That's my strength. You ask that to the majority of men, especially those that think they're elders, they will allude to some spiritual aspect. But it's one thing I'm going to teach and greet you all here in a moment. <clears throat> As I said to my Zakhain Biramin the other day, I said, Zakhain Biramin, what is the element of great strength of a Geba, a mighty man that is spiritual? He has the knowledge of Torah. You see that vitality, the effervescence in everything he does. I said, I want you to ponder that for a moment. I can only answer you according to scripture according to the cafe which is written i say what is the most pronounced signal or sign of a strong mature spiritual man and as we sat there and we pondered i said i'm going to answer the question according to torah and what torah says i says my friend zahim the most pronounced sign, the most pronounced element, the most pronounced characteristic, the most pronounced attribute of a spiritual man is that he simply judge. But he begins where Yah begins. If Yah begins first at Bayat Yisraya, so a spiritual man, he begins with his own laba. He judges himself. He critiques himself constantly. He refines his approach. That he will not be a reproach, a shame unto the Most High. He constantly pruned his mind. I said to my Zakain, isn't that what a marathon runner does? They're not concerned with shaving one minute off of their time. They're concerned with one million of a second. They're concerned with the nano, the smallest of fractions. A third of that tick before it reaches the second mark. And they constantly work to improve themselves, do they not? In any kind of athletics, any kind of supremacy of the supernatural feet of the biological body a man must work constantly and he has someone to judge his movements the way he operates uh, so that he refines that he judge himself daily he looks at films uh, to see his mistakes so does a geba warrior he looks at the day that has passed. And the first thing that is pronounced out of his mouth, how immature I am. And how silly and a dumb jackass I really am. This damn harsh, this beastly mind. Well, I'm spiritual. You're not spiritual. You're a dumb, immature, barren individual. That's what a strong man does. He constantly... He keeps the weaponry of this warfare polish. He keeps that shield of Imuna polish refined. And you will know that he is a soldier. When I was in the military, when you would travel, you had to travel by air. 
And you will see the Marines coming in. They were spit and polish. They had their uniforms tailored to their bodies. Of course, we in the army, they gave us uniforms that some too large and some too small. Shoes, if you wore size 10, they gave you size 12. They say, go. But the Marine, he was polished. And when you would see them walking through the airport, you would have to look at yourself and say, no, I'm not there. And so does a true spiritual Geba, a warrior of Imuna. He always look at those that are much more mature than him. We all think we have the same level of maturity. And it's silly. I know what you know. You don't know what I know. And that's a fact. I know you don't. Period. You can't even talk in the realm that I talk in. You show me that in your physical labor and the attributes. Don't worry, I'm going to preach. I was thinking the other day as I do simple things. You understand? So when I go to the gym, I purchase this ball that when I first purchased the ball, my friend, I will not call his name, Akshimri, I won't pronounce who it is all right and so when i brought it into the gym he looks at it he looks at me and he somewhat mocked me ridiculed me what is that for and so it was a snarl of a this is so silly man have you gone that far but i knew the effectiveness of it so my point was try it my friend try it see what it does and of course now when i see my friend there and if i'm in there i can't get on the ball i cannot utilize it because he understands the value and the importance of it and so i constantly challenge myself to things and to see how my mind will permit I stood here to show you that just to sit up and down in this chair 500 times, try it and see what happens. Non-stop and see what it feels like. I can do it a thousand times if I wanted to. See, that's the strength. When a man goes beyond the limitations, that's what a marathon runner does. Goes beyond the thresholds of one's inability. And that's what the true nation of Yisraya does. It is a nation that prevails. It is a nation that prevails against all opposition of hell, against the tenets of one's own mind. And you see that maturation of maturity and strength. I don't give a damn where he or she goes. You see something that is marvelous and magnificent. Something that is pronounced when they walk in the midst of the nations of this earth. And if we don't see ourselves that way, woe well, unto us. And that's a fact. Yah gave man one of the most beautiful things. He gave us labor to work. The same with you, Bath of Tizayun. You work, you don't have to worry about dieting and diet plans. You don't have to worry about that. It's a fact. You bend your back, you don't have to worry about that. I can eat anything I wanted if I wanted to. If I want steak. And when I work, I work in a fashion to alleviate my act. Sure I do. Sure I do. I was working yesterday. I watched my friend go. He went about 10 feet weeding. I weeded probably 50, 60, 70 feet on both sides. That's the way I work. I let him talk for 35, 40 minutes straight. Then open my mouth. Just work. You can talk. Just And my mantra is that I don't miss one weed. He'll understand that one day. 
I get every weed. I don't concentrate on every weed. I get every weed. It'll come to fruition as time pass. You'll understand that. And that's what Yah does. He gets every weed, every corrupt thing. The thing that corrupt our pony. This false delusional superficial identity that doesn't speak a damn thing. I am a son of Israel. I have been elected. Before I was formed in my Iman womb, he knew me. And he knew I was a warrior from day one. You have soldiers, but everyone is not a Gabbai. Everyone is not a warrior. You have elderly men that are gray headed, but everyone is not a Zachim. Man of wisdom. He's wise. His speech is wise. And when he speaks, all ears are attentive. What a dismal shame. That is why the state of the affairs of Yah are the way they are. They want to challenge each other without any fruit at all. And they don't produce a damn thing. That's a fact. They don't like hearing that. What a dismal shame. You see, the strength of a Gerber, he constantly judges himself. He is a spiritual man. And he always begins at the Be'it. Not Be'it, but the Be'it, the house. The tabernacle of his mind. He begins here. When Yah pours down his judgment, he begins where? At the house. And he begins at the house of Yisrael, which shall be the case, which shall be the end of those that are vile and wicked. And a man that calls himself a Gerber, he always begins here. He is not a spiritual man. If his fruits do not exemplify the power of his Hamashiach, he is not a spiritual man. And that's a fact. And frankly, I do not give a damn if it offends you or you or you as well. Makes me no difference. Neither you. I shall my friend generation is so superficial it wants to be placated it wants to play in the house of whoredom we need strong men we need mighty men we need zakhi when they walk you you can sense the resonation of wisdom that flows from him not stupidity and anger and hostility, a foolish damn spirit. Even his presence teach. Can I say this, my friend? I was thinking this morning, I said, now, these elderly men here would be what we call the real old schoolers. I am on the fringe of that. I'm not the old schooler. I was born in the 50s, but... These are the old schoolers, you understand? And my inspiration as a young lad, I would watch the beauty of their effervescence, how they float, even the most corrupt one, the dignity they had even in their corruption. Sure they were. It was not like I see today. And even as a young boy, I could learn because the Yah had set my mind apart even at a young age. He says to the pure, all things are pure. To those that are defiled and unbelieving, there is nothing that is tachor. There is nothing that is set apart. Although I was ignorant and still am. He had placed the hedge. You think that he placed the hedge around Ehob as he has placed the hedge around Yisrael today or just when Yorkshire came? He knew his nation before they were ever formed. He knew his people. 
He ordained every trial. He ordained that. The plan was laid out in him when he was him. And when was that? It was when. We need the strength of Geba, warriors of Torah. And a warrior doesn't walk when a warrior walks. Uh, he walks. He supports the armor. He has his weapon on his shoulder, his backpack on. The, he walks with an erect nature. He's strong. He's mature. His mind is polished and you see that emanates out of his countenance. You don't have to listen. It's still the truth. And so he brings strength unto the elderly, especially the Ishur, the Achot. And then that brings about the very nature of one's teaching to the children that they can train them in the way that they should go. We greet you all that have joined us by the life visual broadcast or the live audio we greet you all in your sure smarty name so we greet you all for your kindness your gifts and all of you our friend Akesner, and all of you there in tampa wherever you're listening from today we greet you all in your sure smarty name we pray that the Berakaya, the greatness of his rich blessings, the richness of his Torah knowledge, may overpower you and sustain you uh, over these next seven days until we come back into the city of Yerushalayim uh, to offer up the blessings of his riches, uh, that our voices resonate the great victory we have accomplished and overcome. Uh, by the power of the living testimony. Yeah. And that is the testimony of Yoshua HaMashiach. Yeah. Because he lives in us. Because uh, he is our high healer. Yeah. He is our strength to battle. Uh, yeah. He is the strength of us overcoming. Uh, yeah. He is the purpose of our lives. That we are able yeah. to overcome every scenario. Yeah. Circumstance yeah. and situation. Uh, that will draw us in uh, with delusion, uh, with the strong sense of an illusion uh, that we trust in the living about. Yeah. We have bhaktak. It is confidence, not just trust. It is confidence in that trust. It is unshakable and unmovable. Yeah. Nothing shakes it. Life doesn't shake it. Death. Nothing shakes that confidence. One is made strong. There is perseverance. And one perseveres in the midst of some of the most trying circumstances and situation. What is not drawn away from you because of the trials and tribulations that may come. It solidifies one's confidence. Shirak says that it is the Yare, the fear of Yah, that cause one to be drawn or are captivated with his love. And he says, when one has that great love of Yah, then one cleaves unto Yah by faith. And this is a generation where there is no faith. And among Israel, there is no Amun. We have deceived ourselves. We're full of our lies and our corruption. Our tongue is a tongue of Shekhar. We are a forward, a perverse nation of people. And if we honestly examine our own hearts, we frankly don't give a damn. That's why you don't examine it. Can I interject this before I go further, my friend? When I go to the garden, I, I have an assault on every weed. I did not realize yesterday how late it was. So I ask my Ach Yosef, I don't need breaks, but I make sure he gets breaks. 
I don't need a break. I, I labor through the process. And so when he told me what time it was, I said, I, I didn't even know it was this time. Because my personal assault is upon every weed. And I get it before it gets me. Or well, if I let them grow, they will get me. You see, you become despondent when you're weed weeding. You get upset. All of these weeds, and don't look down those rows that we have. They're nearly 500 feet long now. You become very despondent. As the old song, one day at a time. Sweet Yahshua, I take one foot at a time and one weed at a time. Because I know if I continue, I will get it all done. I'm not discouraged because the row is long. I know that there is plenty for the tillage when I see the long rows. And then when I get so far, I don't realize, I look back and say, look how far I have traveled. And it didn't take long either. We get our hearts sincere with the arm. You don't have to prove a damn thing. You just live to let him prove you. I don't have to prove the essence of my wisdom and knowledge. To what? For what reason? To this deluded mindset of this generation? I don't go that way, Yisrael. I had a man to call me the other day. He got offended. He asked me a question. Believing that within a microsecond, he's going to absorb enough to give him confidence. I said to him, sir, my friend, I will not try to answer your question with a fragmented microsession second of an answer. That is not full of the details that are needed for you to understand the essence of that. It cannot be answered in a micro session. It cannot be answered unless there is a detailed process and all the other elements that are included. You understand that. I said, you have to do that, my friend. He got offended. Well, you know what he did. He hanged up the telephone. I said to my Isha, this is a stupid, silly generation. A man reads something, he thinks he is, he is of an expertism of Ru'at in that matter. He has not studied it out in its fullness of details, like I shall show you today. Is that all right? Yeah. You might as well love me whether you love me or not. Yeah. As I was sitting in my private office, the other day, as Torah began to flow from my bosom, my mind, the question arose from the depths of my bosom, why are there not the mighty Mufis, the mighty miracles, and the healing power administered among the nation of Yisrael. Now I know the answer of many. That they think they have a moon. And yet we really don't have that. What has sidetracked the very power of his small faith among a nation. That wandered for 40 years. And they were not dressed or kelly in the diseases of Misra'i. What has been the instrument that has destroyed the power of the element of your Shua HaMashiach? And don't come to me with your damn folly and your immaturity. Where is the strength of the elders, the Zachim? That when one is sick, we call for them. You can't call these damn silly men today. I'm not talking about men that have recently 
but not many years beforehand come into the knowledge of his truth. I'm talking about those that have a testimony that says that we have walked for years. Why isn't it? How is there no mighty miracles? In order for us to understand that, we must search the chronicle of Torah. You can't read one verse from Brit Hadassah and understand that. So I will proceed today in part one. What has happened to the miracles? And don't tell me these damn dogs, like a faggot damn beast in Atlanta, this bishop eddied the dog long, and this effeminate dog Benny Hen, and this beast of a monstrophicus, T.D. Jakes, and all the rest of these deceivers and liars, that there is a mighty power in the name of this damnable demonic lie, Jesus Christ. So if you are performing miracles in Jesus Christ's name, then what in the hell is Benny Hinn forming, performing them in? What does a faggot like Eddie Long that they have testimonies? Quote, Bishop Eddie Long, pray for me and I was here, unquote. And you set yourself apart in your damnable lie of Jesus and say that you're performing miracles. These are damn liars. There's a reason for all things. That's why we need men that are studied men, that are students of Torah. And men that have the ability uh, to shamach, to hear. And quit hearing their own damn immature folly and hear. When a man hear, he grow, when he hears, uh, he grows strong. I read an article, just a snippet, uh, that this basketball player, LeBron James, uh, he said that his first coach taught him one thing. He would every day drive him to do one thing. And that is to dribble with my left hand and use my left hand to make a basket. He said every day before practice, I would get to the gym early and he would refine that. This is a damn generation that is so stupid. It doesn't want to be refined. He said, I worked on that every day. I judged my motion. When I was a ball player, that's one of the first things that I learned. I did everything from the left because everything to the right was natural. I could do that. So I shot left-handed. I drove left-handed. I played to the left of the basket instead of the right of the basket. And then when I began to combine all that together, I, I was able to move anywhere on the basketball courts. Yeah. We get right and see where we have left the truth of Yah. Then there is nothing that Yah speaks to us will be an offense unto us. Yeah. Where are the miracles? Are there miracles today? Do we see them? Do we even have the emu not to pray for one another? Or is some kind of superficial, flawless activities? Do the wives pray for the husbands and the husbands of the wives? Do they lay hands on one another with the oil or, or the riches of Yah's gladness? We got time for every damn thing. We don't have no time for y'all. We got time to be jackasses and act like a damn fool. I'm straight. I'm not going to try to make it rosy. I'm not going to appease my damn corrupt flesh. Neither will I appease yours. If I don't make myself feel comfortable... And I'm not concerned about how comfortable you are. Shut the damn thing off. Find someone that you believe have love. And knows how to love. We're dealing with our nerfish. We're dealing with the life of our being. We're dealing with the substance of who we are. You can play all you want to with all your false delusion of pretending... It's going to snare your nephesh into hell. And that's a fact. If you get nothing out of me, I'm real. My application is real. Why is there no mighty miracle among the people of Yom? Why is it? 
But we see the Simeon, the great power of the gods. I'll explain that. We don't see the miracles, the more faith, the mighty power of your working in the midst. I want to begin here in the Brit Hadassah and the Renewed Covenant. In the book of Yokohana, in the book of John. One verse I want to read here, two verses. It says here in the book of John chapter 9 verse 4. The book of John, this is one of the most powerful miracles that Yoshua, As he caused the blinded or the other. The other, the blinded eyes of one that was blind from birth, and we were blinded from birth. Our parents uh, did not nurture us in the womb uh, in the Torah of Yah. In sin, we were conceived, uh, and our convoluted ways uh, they were transmitted to us by the DNA of mama and daddy. I don't give a damn what you say, Yisrael. And so here, this one, he comes out with the other. Uh, he was blind, his iron, his intellectual, his spiritual dynamics uh, were not operating in the ruach of Yah, just like ours. Uh, we are a people that is Eva. We are blind, we have no spiritual depth, uh, we have no spiritual insight, uh, and we are gullible as hell. Uh, I have people writing me, and they ask questions. I say, who have you been listening to? One of the most pronounced attributes of truth. It will cut the hell out of us. It will cut our wicked arse. It will cut you. His word, his dabarim is powerful and sharper than any two at swords. It doesn't placate you. Hear this mighty miracle, my ark. Man that was born blind from his inner womb, as we were. We had no spiritual ten tentacles, no knowledge. Our minds were not sh uh, formed in the early stages of our homes with that wisdom. Uh. And so this one that is represented in the blindness of his eyes, uh, it shows the other, uh, the blindness of depth uh, without spiritual understanding and depth, uh, whereby our eyes, our eye in, have been put out. We can't see the power of Yah's truth uh, because we dig it into a damnable cesspool uh, of such wickedness uh, and unfaithfulness of Yah. But you, we would say we're faithful. We're not faithful. We are damn dismal people. We're not faithful. Yeah. Man, a woman is faithful. They're faithful in the smallest of things. They're faithful. They're committed. When one is committed, it is an unshakable attitude. I don't care if you get upset with me, you're still. I thought about your son the other day. As a young lad, he's been with us here. He has been unshakable. You don't find men that are beautiful like that. And I thought the other day as I was talking to Zakim, he's about 65 years old. He says to me, Rayan, everyone is always telling me to get a wife. He said, I'm not doing that. He said, because Yahweh will not hold any tough thing from them that walk right. He could get wives if he wanted to, because he's been there. He's been there with the woman thing, so it would not be a problem for this man to get a wife. He said, but that's not the essential right now. That's my prayer for him. The Yah grants unto him. That's right, a wife that will love him. I don't pray that for every man. I have seen the fruit of this man. I don't see that in every man. I've seen the labor of this man's love, his fidelity. I've seen that. I've seen his labor of his Sabbath. I've seen the meekness of his Ruach. I've seen the gentleness and the meekness of his Ruach. You don't find that in many men. And he's younger than many elderly men. You don't find that attribute. Why? Are there no great miracles? The great healing among Yisrael. St. John or John chapter 9 verse 4. 
Yoshua profoundly uttered these words. He says, I must work the works of him that sent me. I must walk in the operation of the one that has commanded and ordained me. Yah has ordained us to a work. He said, I must, it is imperative to me that I must, I cannot contemplate, I must operate in the power of the works of him that has sent me. He said, while it is buka, while it is day, while the light, while the ma'or, the awe of light of refreshing shine, while the great brilliancy of the Torah delight of the conscience, while it emanates from my mind, he says, because the layil, the night, when the whole shek, when the darkness, he said, for the night comes, for the night enters, and this is the catalyst of all things, when no man can work, when no one can work the works of Almighty Yah. When there are no works, when the power of this work cannot be operative, what is the impediment? He says, the darkness. What darkness? Because of the darkness of the light or the lahil. We're going to define this message today, Yisrael. I want to lay down the foundation so that on next Shabbat, I will conclude it with part two. You understand? He said that, while there is light, he said, I am the light of the world. What is the light unto Yisrael? We must define that by Torah. I want to read the next verse in verse 5. Hallelujah. But I want to inject this profound utterance of Shirach. This is what Shirach says here in Shirach. Just hold that in John. Shirach 42 and verse 15. He says unto Yisrael, he says, I will now call to mind. Stay in John, where we left from. Stay there in the book of John 9, 4. I want to read verse 5. He says in the book of Shirach, in the book of Shirach, in the book of Shirach, in the lost books, he says, I will now call to the Laba, the mind. He says, I want to talk about the mythful, the words. You hear that? I will call to remembrance the myth, mythfall, the works. And this deal with the works of Yah. He said the works of Yah. The works of Yah. And I will declare what I have seen by the word of Yah. His works are done. We can never do the works of Yah unless we have the testimony. Is your sure the word of Yah? Yes. He is the power of Yah's speech. He is the life of every word that he has spoke. It is vitally important to understand. There are no mighty miracles in the damn wicked name of Jesus. There are no miracles among the Hebrew Israelites. None whatsoever. Because the darkness has prevailed. The minds are dark with dark saying. There is no true desire of the light of Torah. These are the works of Yah. And the works of Yah done by his Torah, his Tabarim. And the word was made flesh. We cannot perform the works of Yah unless it is according to the pristine order of Torah. We cannot operate in the Torah of Yah unless it is by his works. And that is what Shirak says. Well, that has implication throughout Torah. We will see what it does. Yoshua says again in John 9, 4, I will work the works of him that sent me. He is the word of Yah. It is the Torah of Yah that works or operates or, or gets done what Yah intends to get done. He says, I will work the works of him that sent me while it is day. He says, for the night comes where no man he did not say some. He used the word lu, no, N-O. It cannot be. It is absolutely settled. That's why he commands us to let our yea be yea and our nay be nay. Anything more than that is sin. There is hatta in our hearts. Anything more than that. He says, 
that no man can work as long, hear this now, as long as I'm in the world. I am the light of the world. As long as I am in the world. He says, as long as I am in the Iraq, in the uttermost parts of the world, uh, he says, I am the light of the world. Now, let us examine the world of this nature of our minds. Is your sure in our minds? He's not in our minds, Yisraya. Hell, Walmart contains more time in our minds than Yah. Our own damn frivolity contains more time than Yah. Our own anger, our own nature. He says, long as I'm in the world, I'm the light of the world. There is not much light today. There is no ma or there is no rejoicing at the hearing of the Torah of Yah. We can be superficial all we want to. As long as I'm in the world, I am the lights of the world. Long as he is in our minds, then the works can be done. He is not in the mind of Yisrael. He is not in our thoughts. We are braggadocious and bodacious, but we are ignorant in all of that. We are not ignorant, we are stupid. He calls us sottish. We are shana, we are sottish, ignorant, damnable people. And the reason why we don't examine ourselves. But a man is spiritually judged himself. He judged himself continuously. Every second. Every hour. His mind is activity. When I'm working. I do something silly. My mind is constantly. What do you mean? When I get in a little haste. When I want to get things done. I say no boy stop that. You silly jackass. You can't afford to get hurt. So I slow it down. I say, yeah, I know I will get it done. And I take my time with great endurance. And that's the way I do things. I don't get in a hurry. I don't get upset. The night season come. When no man can do the works of almighty Yahweh. When there can be no works. Do we understand what the works of Yah really consist of? Do we know that? You spiritual ones, I know you know it. You that are wise and know everything, you know what everyone else knows. I want to show us the works of Yah. We're an ignorant jackass of a people, all of his nation. We can try to put a spin on us all we want to. The men are silly as hell and immature. And the women love frivolity and damn folly. We love to eat and to spend our time foolishly. Not a damn thing accomplished. Nothing at all. What are the works of Yah? What produced the works of Yah? You see, we want to be grand. We want to be perceived as though we are mighty. Let me show you the works of Yah. Can I show it? Because I want to get. Let me move a little farther, all right? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. It says in the sixth chapter of the same book, John chapter 6. This is why there, there is no great work among us. John chapter 6. I would have began here at verse 28 when he made this profound disclosure with oratorial skills unto those that were in his midst. It says in John chapter 6, 28. Then they said to Yahshua, What shall we do that we might work the works of Yah? Is that the rendition in your writing there? What must I do that I may work the works of Yah? What do I do that I may work the works of Yah? What is the protocol? That I may assign, form and fashion my mind, my will, my passion, my desire. That I may assign, perform the works of Yah. What must I do? Yahshua answered and said to them, this is. This is the work of Yah. That you believe on him that sent me. Hell, we don't believe it. Or oh, these damn spiritual titans. The cowards, they don't have the ability to fight. They don't know how to fight. 
He says, this is the work of Yah. That we believe. That's important. I want you to understand that. That we, botak. We trust Yah. This is the great work of Yah. That we believe on Him. That Yah sent. That we have the testimony. We don't believe on Him. Our minds are not on Him. Our thoughts are not on Him. Let's get real. Uh. Let's get sincere and quit pretending. Uh. When a man comes in the presence of Yah's Torah, when he begins to emanate from him, he, he expressed the light the ma, or the gladness, just like Moshe did when Yah dealt with him, Paul name to Paul me name, face to face. Why? Because he was his friend. Yahshua said the things that, uh, that, that are hidden from the world. Uh, he said these things, uh, I call you no more my abbot, my evadim, my servants. He said, but I call you my friends. Because I will not withhold anything from any of you all. Yet we're not even the friend of Yahshua HaMashiach. We have some of the most vileness of wickedness in our damn minds. Some of the most damnable corrupt things are hidden in our minds. And we think we're hiding from you, you damn beasts. I'm not playing. I'm not here to satisfy your damn wicked flesh. Damn it. And I want you to get mad at me. Isn't that simple? These are the works of Yah. That we just believe. I was saying to the ark some the other day. I say one of the most profoundest thing of the simplicity of Torah. It is some, the summation of it all is in one word. If we just believe it. That's all we got to do. You don't have to see no oath, no signs. Just believe it. We don't even believe it. That's the simplicity of Torah. Just believe it. You don't have to climb Mount Everest. You don't have to show your bull and your tough. You can, you can fight with the best of them. You don't have a damn thing. If we just believe. That's all we got to do is believe. Believe on him. In order for us to trust what he said here. That must be synonymous throughout Torah. We must go back to the Bereshit of all things. And through the culmination of searching and digging through Torah, we must conclude that what Yahshua said is truth. This is the work of Yah. We just believe. We don't believe that we lay hands on someone. It is a formality that the whole has taught us well. Because we don't believe. And that's a fact. It is because of the whole shaykh, the darkness of our minds, uh, and the things that we have allowed to be embedded in our thoughts, uh, and what we delight in. We don't delight in Torah. And we delight in some of the most foolishness of folly. May I proceed? Hallelujah, I shall. He said, this is the work of Yah. This is the work of Yah. This is the work of Yah that you believe on him uh, whom Yah has sent. And they said therefore to him, uh, you see they didn't believe. This is what they said. What oath, what sign will you show us that we may or our eye may be open. Uh, the one that was, uh, uh, was blind from the mother's womb, uh, he healed him. That is symbolic with the nation of Israel. We are blinded people. We can't see because of what's behind us. Show us a sign. And while it was light, he showed them the sign. He showed them the mighty sign of the Abba. They said, show us something that we may believe you. What works? Or oh, what are the mitzvah that you perform? What are the works uh, that you perform? What is the actions and the activities of your works? What is your work of Sadiq, man? What is your work of Sadiq, woman? You old silly woman. You damnable foolish old man. Immature as hell. What are your works? Hell, you're grumpy and mean as hell. You immature old woman. Come talk to me. I don't care if you don't love me. You don't give a damn about you. Hell, you grumpy old man. 
You immature woman, silly as hell, play all the time. I can't stand, never have uh, like silly women. Even when I was a young boy, I didn't like that. Because I carried myself in a way, even when I was young and wicked. Don't be silly with me. No, I don't go that way, period. I hate it. I despise it. I hate the folly of a woman that loves to laugh. I will come on, man. Silly man find things so funny. I don't care if you fall off. We must establish a pattern among the young men, the ak. Get quiet. They're quiet too. Can I proceed? I shall. What is the sign you're going to show me? What is the sign that we show each other? It is our works of Sadiq. It is the beauty of our kindness and our mikruach. It is our gentleness. It is our love. Hell, you don't show that what you think you're showing. You see the stupidity of our faces. You know, we get angry at everything but ourselves. And you're the damn fool. It's not me. Oh, I'm my own fool. You're your own damn worst enemy. And it's your damn stupid, immature mind. And by the way, I don't give a damn if you leave me or any of you all leave me. It doesn't make me any difference. And that's a man that knows his place. Oh, there will be someone that stands with me. He's done it all these years from a young boy. He was in uh, yeah. Don't sleep in my services. His mother and his father gave a lot of money. But boy, you don't sleep here. Uh-uh. You're going to wake up. Now watch him fight with everything he had in here. He didn't sleep on the football field. He didn't sleep dribbling that ball. He wasn't going to sleep in all of my ignorance. Uh -uh. I want to move on a little bit. The works of Yah. Why there are no mighty miracles? In these damn Jesus thumpers of lies, they're not performing a damn thing. It's amazing that they're performing things that are all internal, but nothing organic. Or Robinson performed one damn miracle. He was a hyper of this illuminated power of the spirit of darkness, of the short damn. And everyone flocked to that damn beast. Look at that faggot son and the horse wife of the faggot son today. He built the damn college to educate the damn fools. And he died a liar. There was no organic miracle. Pretty hand can't claim to any damn organic miracle. And these little drugstore preachers can't do the same thing. They're full of lies. Oh, I prayed for someone that had a heart ailment and it was here. You're a damn liar. You're a flat out liar. We're in a time of great darkness, Yisraya. That's why our minds are occupied with dark things. It's not the mind of Yisraya occupied with dark sayings. Our minds are always on the dark things. It's not on the things of light. We don't rush to get the Torah. Our minds are on the damn internet and the dull net and the dying net. Selling and talking, doing every damn thing but what Yah says. I'm not backing down to this wicked world. You can pretend all you want to. You're going to die wickedly. Why is there no mighty works among us? But we all have the great immuna or the immun. The immun is the power to operate and to perform in his immuna or his faith. We all have that, don't we? I know you do. Why is it? If your shoe was in your midst, would you not just gravitate to him? Well, he is in the midst today. Let us draw nigh unto him. He will draw nigh unto us. Let us draw nigh. Let us draw close to his word. 
Let it do the transformation. It's one thing that the power of the Torah does. Uh, it always transforms us. Uh. You know the way I used to walk, talk, and look. I don't look that way no more since the power of the Torah captivated me. Oh, I'm not. Listen to this then. It says here in the book of Marcus, Lucas, in the book of Mark, chapter 6 and verse 5. We're not, there are no mighty miracles performed in Jesus' damn name. You got all these he ha 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 pa sa pa ri pa 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 It's a damn demonic power. The spirit of sure them. I'm so glad that I did not allow those men to lay hands on me and pray like, I, I didn't allow them to do that. I would just stand back and watch. Listen to this, Yisraya. It says in the book of Mark, chapter 6, verse 5, uh, we say we love your sure. And yet in his own country, around his own kinsmen, are we the kinsmen of Yahshua? Yeah. Are we not his ach, achim and achim? Yeah. And yet he was despised among his own. Yeah. We despise Torah, we despise correction, we despise truth, we despise any kind of judgment. Yeah. It's one thing about a mighty warrior, he never despised judgment. He always knows that it refines him and makes him better. And after he looks at another and say, I want to learn how he did that move. And he patterned himself according to that move. He said, because nobody can stop that move. Listen to this in the book of Mark. Chapter 6, verse 5. It says, and Yoshua HaMashiach, he could do no asan, no mighty works. He could do no asan, no melcha, no powerful works. He cannot do it today. Why? Except that he laid hands on a few, it calls them hachla, few sick people, and he rafa, he healed them. There were no mighty works. There were no power of his great miracle working or the miracle working power of Torah. Why? And he marveled. And he marveled. Because of their mara, their unbelief. He marveled because we don't believe. We say we believe, but we are a pack of liars. We must believe in the power of that name. If we believe in that name, it produced fruit. He marveled. He marveled. What is the work of Yah that we believe? On him whom Yah has sent. We believe on that name. It is pronounced in your house, in your walk, uh, in your talk, you love that name. We don't give a damn about that name. And we love mom and daddy more than we love you. Yeah. We love our own sin and our long, own corruption. That's why we retain it. We hold fast to our wicked damn ways. Yeah. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. That's why we hold fast to it. He could do no mighty works. Except that he just laid hands on a few sick people and they were healed. He looked at their unbelief and it was astounding. He looks at our unbelief and it is astounding yeah. that we don't believe. I know we want to masquerade ourselves as though we are great and magnificent mighty people. You will never understand the element or the power of your truth until you begin to judge yourself. And when you begin to do that, you'll be judged. You don't need to be judged. If we will judge ourselves, we have no need to be judged of no man. You don't judge yourself. I said to one one day, I said, you judge others, don't you? Yes, sir. I said, you don't want nobody to judge you and tell you how wicked you are, how, how vile you are. And you judge people hard, too. Sure he does. He judges them hard. You can't judge him. You will go to hell. I don't care who you are. Ain't that right? No, not is I ain't that right. I can be tough at times, can I? Can I be sweet? Very sweet? All right. I like that. He can be so sweet. Oh, the sweetness that flows 
like the honey from the honeycomb. He can massage your mind up. Try it sometime. It may work, all right? I will come on, man. How about that? Isn't it amazing? We will go out to the world and pretend we're something and, and, and try to impress them. I'd rather impress you. I don't give a damn what the world wants. I, I don't care what the world thinks of me. I know who I am. I was in the store the other day and I noticed this woman watching me. I didn't even want to. Don't watch me. And so my Ishaw, she comes back where I am and she sits down. And this woman just, I said, don't look at me, thing. And so all of a sudden, I saw this woman runs over to my Isha and hugs her. Oh, well, they were sir, one of her kinsmen. She hadn't seen them. And my Isha was like, don't do that, girl. And so I looked. I said, this cow, this heifer. Hmm. So I continued to do what I was doing. And she's talking with my Isha, but her eyes were, they were not on my Isha. You understand? So I go and try on a pair of tennis shoes. Yes, Shimri, I went out the other day and I told him exactly where I went. I didn't mean to use his name, but he <clears throat> confronted me in, all, in front of all the ark. When you all left that first day, I worked until one. I went down to CVS to get some funds that Yada sent so that we could get some material to send back to her. Went to UPS and I came home. Tuesday I worked all day. I worked from 6 that morning. I was up. I went to the gym. And I worked all day. And then I cooked for my precious Oxymion. I went and laid it on the grill and cooked him a steak. We sat down at the table. I was so filthy. It was pathetic. And... Yana did not send the information for my Ishaw to get the money, and I knew she needed the money because that's how she makes her little living. So on Wednesday, I got up early. As soon as there was daylight, I was out working. So I left around 11. And of course, I had a friend to check in on me, and uh, Simeon, uh, my friend, said he wasn't here. So he reminded me, and in my Zakain, we had traveled, and I told him everything I did. And Zakain said he told me everything he did. He told me all the details of it. He told me everything. So I said, I got you. You have nothing on me at all, man. I don't hide anything. Nothing. I love working. This is what we must do to work the works of Yah. Hallelujah. Hear this. It says in verse 6 of Marcus, and he marveled because of their nara. They were so rebellious. They were so contentious. That's what Mara, that is what unbelief produced in us. We rebel against Torah. We rebel against Torah, against what Yah command. We are obstinate. We oppose what Torah says because of their unbelief. And he went around that village, that place. He could do no mighty works, just teaching. He could do no mighty works. It was a darkness that covered the place. And I want to identify that darkness and separate it, all right? These lawyers tell you that demons cannot perform this in Jesus' name. They're liars. I will prove all that out, Yisrael. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. He marveled at all their unbelief because they did not operate in the Ruach of Yah. Well, no demons can do that. All right, turn quickly, if you will, uh, to the book of Maaseh, Cilicium, the book of Acts. I want to read a verse here quickly. The book of Acts, the eighth chapter. I want to read verse five first. Acts chapter eight, verse five. It says, Then Philip went down to the city of Samaria, Shumrun. And he began to declare Almighty Yahweh unto them. He began to preach, then demons and all kinds of, of spirits began to cry out and come up out of the people. Yisrael. Hallelujah. And it says, yeah, I want to drop down to verse 9 and 10 quickly. It says, but there was a certain man named Simeon. With before time uh, in the same city, uh, he had used Kashyath. Uh, he had used the power of sorcery. The book of Acts. 
chapter 8, verse 9. He had used sorcery, witchcraft, and the power to bewitch the minds of the people. What is the bewitching power or the kasaf or, or the anan? What bewitches the mind of the people? It caused them not to obey Torah. O foolish Galusha, who has bewitched you, that you should not obey the Torah, the truth of Yah. See, we can't obey Torah. And because we don't believe in Yah, we don't believe in the testimony, we don't obey what Torah tells us. And that's why there are no mighty works among the nation today because uh, we are under the cloud of darkness. Our minds uh, are entertained by darkness. Uh, our thoughts are filled with darkness. He had bewitched the people of Samaria and uh, given himself uh, as one that was someone that was great and mighty. And this is the catalyst in verse 10. To whom they all, to whom called, Everyone to whom all they gave great heed. It says from the least of the people to the greatest. Saying this is a great man of Yah. Do they not call T.D. Jakes a great man of God? Do they not call Benny Hinn a great man of God? Do not they call Creflo Dollar a great man of God? They call them great men. Hell we don't even know. As our Zakain pointed out to us, Yah has given us an order. We don't even regard that. We will not say that he's a great man of Yah. He's a mighty man of Yah because we think, hell, we're all great and we're all mighty, but you're not great. You're not mighty. Yet all of the people from the greatest to the politicians, they declared that he was a great man of, of God. And yet we will not say that this is a pure man of Yah. He's a beautiful man of Yah because of our own. Wicked indulgence. We can't say it. We cannot say it. Yeah, Yah means what he says. Those that do well and teach us in the knowledge of Torah. The word of devil honor because he has put his seal upon them. I don't give a damn what you think. They call him a great man of God, didn't they not? They call him great. The word God will mean without numeric association. It, it cannot be numbered. He has such skills and such beauty. He has, as an elderly man that I talk to at times, he would tell me, Ray Ark, you don't know how much you bless me. He sends a lot of money. He asked me the other day, what will it take for you to get the printing press and all that running? Don't worry about it. You just get someone on that. I can trust his words. He said, I, I don't know how to say it, but how you bless me and how every message on that website, it enriches me and causes me to grow. And I look at myself and say, what a shame as old as I am. I don't have nearly the wisdom of that man. I say, you have a great platform of wisdom, man. You have great understanding. You have more knowledge and understanding than most men have. He said, I don't sense it. It's not whether you sense it or not. I'm telling you that. A wise man can understand the nature of another wise man. He draws to him. And he says to me, if you were not a preacher, because every story you tell, it's interwoven with a message. And it all comes out in the wash. And it makes sense. I appreciate you, man. I love you. I appreciate it. What you say. There are not many people tell me they love me. I don't want them to. Hallelujah. He performed great miracles. Simeon. By the power of bewitching. In verse 11. It says in the book of Acts 8, 11. And to him they had regarded. They had great respect for. They had great honor for. They considered him. They listened to his counsel. They had regarded because that of a long time he had bewitched them through the power of uh, Anna, a sorcery. You understand the word Anna, what it implies? It means that he produced. That is what the word Anna, sorcery, it means that he produced results. He caused the people to see, that's right, you're safe. He caused them to see, Anna, that's why you must say, oh me. He had Anna, through the power of Anna, he produced. Through the power of sorcery, and they believed. 
Because he had a seal of evidence. That's why they asked, your sure shows a miracle. What sign shall you give us uh, that we may believe? Because we want to work the works of Yah. Yahshua said, just believe. Let me see something. He said, no, just believe. Well, I got to have a sign. He said, just believe. That's why the masses of the people are bewitched in the damn life, Jesus. Uh, and these damn phony liars that say they're performing miracles, they're damn liars. Or oh, I laid hands on a woman, she had this heart ailment, uh, and she got up and said, I was feeling well. I laid hands on this brother, he had ailments in his heart. No, what the brother needs to do is lose some damn weight. Uh, he's too fat, he's too big. Uh, that's why he got the heart ailment. Uh, same thing with the sister. Let's get real uh, But where, where about the palsy? I remember asking one, all right, there's one among you that's crippled. Lay hands. Well, I haven't reached that far yet. You silly jackass. You silly man. We're in the night season. When that, did that season begin? After those three dark days after he got up out of the grave, we saw the separation from Yah. We saw that. We saw that. You get up in the morning, uh, it doesn't take long for your mind to separate from you. At the course of the day, you meet as a damn snake. you wicked as hell. you grumpy as a damn bear. And the Torah talks about that too. I know what I'm saying. I studied the book. I don't read it. I studied the book. I study. I study. I hug. I studied the book. Hallelujah. You're boasting? No. I'm just speaking of the value of my time. I'm getting older. And I don't want to hold nothing back because I want these warriors, these gubbers to be strong. That's why when I work with them, I want to show them I work as hard as you, man. I constantly remind them if I, if y'all takes me, I want you all to do this. And that's what the Zachin does. He leads by pattern and example. His life is beautiful. I can deal with old men with the same equality I deal with young men. Young men that love me, love me just like old men that love me. Not all old men love me because they're silly. I don't try to prove myself with a young man. You show him I'm more excellent than him, my strength is mightier than his. I don't do that. But it's one thing when I work with him, I will show him I will give you the same labor, man. You don't have to worry about that. It's not going to take us all day to do a job. Not me. Yes, one other thing, my Ach Shimri, I did do. Sir, thank you. Even with the dear flies on me and running me, I took my Ishaw to the other side. And I measured the piles of wood we had over there. I said, if I get on this stack, Shimri there, Yawasak Duck there. You sippy and zake, and I say, we're going to get it done. And I say, by the way, we got trees down around this place. I said, Akshimri and I cut that for us. How about that, man? How about that? Of course, I wore my hat to the other side. She said, you didn't give me one. I said, well, take mine. I knew the hat was hot. Comes all the way down the shoe. <laughs> I said, I don't mind that. You just walk out, keep the dear flies off of you. I'm always, my mind is constantly, it's the care of the nation. Hallelujah. He performed the great miracles among the people. By the power of Anna, he produced. Yoshua sure cannot produce because of unbelief. And we don't believe. We say we do, but we truly do not believe. In order for you to believe, it's going to take this word to refine us. There are no mighty miracles, Yisraya. Don't let these damn soothsayers and liars, uh, they always want to lay hands on you for something that's internal. Uh. Been here and you have never seen a crippled child come before him. What a palsy. One more reading here. Hold up. You don't see that in the midst of all these dirty bastards. It says in Acts chapter 8 verse 7, 
This when the Philip began to lay hands and preach the power of Torah, it says, for unclean spirits, for the short dims, for unclean spirit cried with a loud voice, cried with loud voices, come out of many. They came out of many that were possessed by the powers of hell. And many, not a few, Rabba, Ra, many were taken with palsies, a crippled, debilitating, handicapped, limbs twisted, legs twisted. These damn lied bastards will not lay hands on someone like that. When they do this, they say, you're going to be all right. You got no healing, baby. No, there is no damn healing there. They don't even believe Yisra'ya. They don't even believe in the name of that damn filthy Jesus. It said this man and many of palsy uh, that were crippled and broken uh, and broken down, Yisra'ya, laid hands on them. Uh, and it said, uh, and they that were lame, they were healed. Uh, they couldn't even walk and get out. They didn't have wheelchairs. Uh, they were carried in. It's like the one that was carried up on the roof. Uh, and heard the power of the teaching of Shaul. And Kepha, which one was it? And he fell down through the lattice. Laid hands on him and he came alive. We are people that don't believe. Yeah. We have no confidence in Torah. How do I know we don't believe? We don't allow to correct us. We don't allow the Torah to correct us. Yeah. We're a pack of liars if we say we do. Yeah. Let's get real. We don't want any of Yas Musa on his correction. We get angry as hell. We don't want no one to show us our lack. I've seen Ak. I say things to them, and I, you know, you just know the resistance in the Ruak. Don't get crazy with me, man. You get mad because I said that. You're immature. And if they want a job, they will split their arse and they will not say a damn thing. You look like that, man. Well, what's your problem? They will fire you. And yet we're so appeasing to the world. Yet when it comes to Yisra, we don't believe. We don't believe that we are Yisrael. We don't believe because that we believe that we will love them like we love ourselves. And I don't want your damn love because you don't give a damn about you. Because if you did, you wouldn't look like you look. You wouldn't act the way you look. You, I love me. I love me a whole lot. Yes, I do. I love me. I really love me. Falling in love with me, I can't know. I'm just falling in love with Re'akhzazira. I'm falling, falling in love with me, sure. For your words are the best thing that happened to me. Yeah, I love me. That's why I chastise me and refine me every day. I do. I refine me all the time because I love me. I love me a lot. If I don't love me, how can I love her? If a man doesn't love him, how could he love you? How can one love you, O oh woman? If they don't love them, so can't be. And how can you love someone unless you love truth? You can never dismantle this unbelief without hearing the Torah of Yah. You must hear what the Torah says. Imuna comes by hearing. We must shemak at hearing. The only thing that brings the ability to hear open the gates of our mind, it is the hearing of Torah. So I love me. I love me. I love me a whole lot. And because of that, I can love my neighbor. I will not do you wrong. And I'm not going to allow you to do me wrong. And I'm not going to allow you to do anyone else wrong. She I love me. I care about me a lot. And I take care of me. I watch for me. I keep myself clean. But I will say this. If I didn't have to do two things, I wouldn't do three, really. If I'd never had to take a bath, I would never do it. All right. 
You, you all don't understand that. Cows don't take baths. I will never take baths. Wasted time. I will never sleep. I will not. If we could refresh ourselves for two hours on the ship, after all things, before that sun goes down, our bodies just... And then we got energy for the... I wouldn't sleep. And I wouldn't waste my time eating because eating to me is just boring. It's you know, nothing satisfying. You. you don't remember what you ate yesterday, the taste of it. As I said to the actor, they described to me the taste of fried chicken. Oh, man, well, well, it's good. That, that, that's not telling me nothing because you say it's tough. I want the nuances of it. The fragrance, the flavor, the spices. What does that cumin taste like? Well, it has this uh, bitter, it, 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 it's, it has this earthly tone that, that resonates on your palate. And it flows through your nostrils. And you can sense the melody of a symphony uh, of sweet flavors of the sugars uh, and the honey dripping. You see, that talk like that to me. Because you don't remember what you ate yesterday, the taste of it. No more than you remember what you ate this morning. And you didn't. I cannot recall the taste. So I'm not consumed that way. You can't tell me what it tastes like. I've always marveled. I died, man. They give him his last meal. Who in the hell thinking about eating? You know you're dying. You're not going to remember that. You got to be a fool. You couldn't give me nothing. I'm dying. I don't want to eat. Probably wouldn't eat for days or weeks. It's not funny, you all. Hell, we're dying in our sins. And Yah offers us the legend of life and we say, hell no. We say, hell no. What is that? He, he offers us reproof and correction. That's the way of life and we reject that. Hallelujah. So these lying dogs in their Jesus Christ, their Christo, they are anointed by them. Every group got their own Christ. And a Christ is the one that is anointed. They have anointed their own damn Jesus. They have anointed their white Jesus that's segregated. There's a difference between a poor white Jesus and a rich white Jesus. There's a difference between a sophisticated black Jesus and a dumb black Jesus. There's a difference between a Jew Jesus and, a, and one that is in poverty Jew Jesus. I don't give a damn if you don't like it. It's a fact. He did great works. And because of that, they believe. And they say, we know this is of her short tongue. Anything that's done in Jesus' name is a damn lie. If Benny Hinn is doing it, I don't want to do it. Yeah. If T.D. Jakes is praying and healing in Jesus' name, uh, I'm suspect. And if you're praying in Jesus' name and healing, I'm much more suspect, man. You, you all give this to your pastors. You give it to a friend. Tell someone to listen to this, all right? Uh, I want them to get upset with me. Uh, I don't mind that. Sir. Tell them to call me. And we'll go line upon line from Torah. Tell them please. Uh, I, I'm not afraid of him. Tell them to call me. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Now how do I know we're in this dark hour? I read it last week in the final hours. Quickly move with me, Yisrael. Hallelujah. To Metitia, Matthew, chapter 27, verse 45. I'm going to read from Matthew's turn there, 2745, because I want to give you the parameter of this and the circumference of what it entails. Matthew's 27, verse 45, and Lucas 23, 44. Matthew 27, 45, Matitia, and Lucas 23, 44. I want to read here, and I want, you see, we read things, but we don't pay attention. It says in the book of Matthew 27, 45, it says now from the sixth hour, and we understand the numeric value of the number six, it is the creation of man. And from the day, the sixth day that man was created, uh, he has brought forth nothing but wickedness and sin. That's what has come out of his loins. And when we look to all such, I'm a man, you're a damn boy. You're not a man. For man has the strength of Yahshua as his head. He has the breath of life in him. From the sixth hour, it says there was hoshek, that was darkness and misery. Are we not a miserable people? Our bodies are failing us. Come on, Yisrael, let's get real. We're not healthy. We're sick as hell. That's a fact. Let's get real. Let's be honest with ourselves. And hell, everyone has become a practitioner. 
I don't despise her because y'all said don't despise her because y'all made them. But our lives have become uh, a, a persistent of herb pills and bottle pills uh, and pills here, a damn pill here, and a damn herb here, and a damn herb there, and a damn pill there, and a damn pill there. It is the truth, my Zachin. Give us a pattern of life. We will love life and see better days. Let us reframe our lips from evil. And let there be no damn guile in us, no deception of hell like our shatan. He was full of guile. Let's get real. We must examine ourselves according to Torah. Nobody escapes that. Nobody. Not the one that declared it. He's going to be pronounced. His judgment is going to be more pronounced than your judgment. I will, my friend. I want to make it down this last journey, and I know I can't make it off the, the little fuel that I intake. I need some real fuel. You go out there and you, working all day in the sun, you cutting them big logs and them trees and they're falling. You need some meat in your belly to stand in that. At least they said they would hire me. We cut down these trees. They said, we hire as a ground man. That's all right. I don't like climbing them tall trees no way. And I'll do your job, too. Matter of fact, I'm going to go out one day. When you get a nice job, I'll take the big hammer I got. And one day I'm going out. I'm going to drive now. So when we finish that job, I'll come back. Hallelujah. He says, from the sixth hour, there was hoshak. There was darkness, misery, obscurity. It was death. The minds of the people. The word Hoshak implies that there's ignorance. They call Africa the dark continent. Because the people did not resemble the intellectual what we throw from the West. Uh, which everything is predicated upon their dimension of what intellectualism is. Uh, these damn stupid fools uh, in this America. The only thing they produce is death. They know how to kill well. And we're sick as hell. Our bodies are failing us. Hell, they don't eat pork chops every day over there. They get a little meat, they are appreciative. They don't have to have steak and hamburgers every day. Uh, we're killing themselves. They don't need potato chips and damn chocolate chip cookies and cake every day. He says there were darkness, who struck. There was death and ignorance and, 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 and whole shekha implies there's a great wickedness. It says over all the land. Does it say that? Yes. Over all the land to the ninth hour. We understand that the ninth or the numeric of the word ninth, uh, it is the final judgment. That's what it implies. So it was all over the land of Yerushalayim, over the land of, of Yisra'ya. But here's one that brings great clarity to that in Lucas 23, 44. He says, and it was about the sixth hour. And there was darkness over all the earth. Does it say all the earth? Does it say all the earth? He said there was darkness over all the earth until the ninth hour. There's darkness over the whole earth today. The minds are ignorant. They have displaced the name of his Hamashiach with a damn lie that has been created from a damn corrupt mind. A vile, wicked mind. There's darkness, there's ignorance, there's stupidity, there's Hoshaka. We are in the final hour. We are in the Akaritha. And the ninth hour represents the final judgment. We all going to stand before the judgment seat of Almighty Yahweh. You better get it right. There's no time for your folly. If you could ask the one that died yesterday, they would tell you. You can't get it right. When the power of death sees on you, you're not thinking about getting nothing right. That's why these damn deathbed salvation, I've never believed them. In all of my ignorance, I, I say it's a damnable lie. You've never known him. You've never seen the power. You've never experienced the love of God. And all of a sudden, you're going to fall in love with him. And you're on the damn death chamber. Oh, I went to mama and I told her about Yahshua and Yahweh. And she said, I accept that. Mama didn't accept the damn thing. Mama's mind was corrupt as hell. Mama died wicked. And mama is going to hell. How about that? Falling in love. I sing it like that. With your sure Hamashia, oh, falling in love. With your sure, my king, oh, I'm falling in love. With your sure, for he is the one that 
corrects me every day. We need correction. We need the correction of Yah. We need the Musa, the counsel that corrects us and refines us. We need that. You may not appreciate what I'm saying today, what the Ru'aq utters unto us. You may not can understand what I'm saying. But by and by, when you overcome what? Your flesh, your wickedness. Oh, by and by, when you overcome all of your wicked and corrupt ways that are in your mind, then you will understand the ways of Yah. When you overcome your own wickedness, you got to overcome that. You got to overcome your own damn wicked ways. That's a fact, Yisrael. Yeah. Hallelujah. He says, from that ninth hour, from the sixth to the ninth, uh, until the day of the final judgment, when he shall ascend from the Hashemayams of Yah. When the Melech, when the Melechim shall blow the shofar, and he shall ascend. And then the whole earth will illuminate with the light. The healing uh, is going to be restored. Uh, the water is going to be restored. Whereby this damn wicked nation uh, of corrupt damn greed has polluted every damn thing. Uh, this damn wicked America and the damn mind uh, of America is a damn sadistic, vile, sanitite mind. Uh, he's going to rise with healing in his way. He's going to heal everything. The earth is going to be restored. She's going to be renewed. Uh, she's going to be refreshed. Uh, we in the hour, there are no damn miracles. Uh, I don't say that, Yisraya, to disregard the power of Yah's miracles. Every now and then, every year, He calls us to come to the pools of Shulu and the waters of refreshing. You come in one day and you just don't know if I can make it. I don't know uh, if I can make it. Yeah, oh, I don't know. If I can press on through and he heals us. Yeah. Talk to me. Yeah. And so every once a year he send him a lock. He sent a messenger. One of the messengers that words resonate from the bosom. And it brings forth the Rafa, the healing of God. He talks of liars. No miracles. Or Robinson performed one damn miracle. I challenge you damn lying historians. You're making money off the damn dead man. Muhammad Ali makes more money than anyone alive every year in his sports figure. He can't talk. He makes around $60 million a year. That's the kind of money Muhammad Ali makes. His brain is shot. He makes that kind of money. And all he does is draw and watercolors and paint, and he loves candy. That's all he does. All that money can heal his mind. All oh, the gain sin is not going to heal you. We got to begin to begin to inspect ourselves. We got to begin to inspect our hearts. And the only way we're going to do it, you got to get in the fire, and you don't know the fire is burning, and the heat is hot. Baby, don't as they would say, baby, don't jump out the frying pan into the fire. Let this word saturate us and. Purge out the dross of wickedness. Hallelujah. Well, you read all that from Brit Hadassah. Okay, let's get into the into his Brit, his covenant by his spoken word. I read you the living covenant of his word in Yeshua. So I want to take us to some places where it talks about the whole shek, the darkness. Can I do that for a moment? All right, let's go to Shemoth. Let's go to Exodus. Exodus chapter 21. And I want to give you an expo of what happened in the book of Yashar. Or Yashar. It says in the book of Exodus chapter 10, 21. Yashar said, for the night comes when no man can work. And I want to show you the, the, the epitome or the strength of this hoshek of the darkness. Listen to what it says in Exodus 10, 21. And Yah said to Moshe, I want you to stretch out your hand toward the heavens Hashemayim. And there may be darkness. I want it to be Hoshak. 
I want it to be such darkness that the minds are ignorant, the obscurity, uh, the, 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 the very pain and the agony, and we're in great pains. Exodus 10.21. He said that there may be, there may be darkness uh, over the land of Mitzrayim. Listen, he says, even the Hoshech, even this kind of darkness and misery, even the ignorance and the death and the great wickedness. Have you ever walked in a place and could feel the wickedness? Have you ever done that? You've walked in a place and you say, man, even I don't care if you're better than Leroy Brown, you say, this ain't the place to be. Get up out of here. Player, come on, dog, you can't hang here. I'm going to a place where you can sense the power of death and darkness. He said, It shall be such hoshak, such darkness, that what, yeah? He says, That which it may be, Masha, it may be felt. I want them to feel the darkness. I want them to feel the wickedness. And the sins that have been performed uh, against my nation, my people, uh, America. She's in, a, she's in the cold room of darkness. Everything, Mr. Obama killing babies, uh, and yet the babies are being killed here. They're being sucked out of the womb. Men have no direction. There are faggots and butch bull daggers everywhere. Your command says storms, says winds uh, to blow and it consume their babies. Uh, he dropped the bombs. He caused that little educated uh, uh, a lieutenant to sit there in New Jersey or to sit there in Nevada with this, uh, with this joysticks with that drone. Uh, and he dropped the bombs on the little babies of Afghanistan. Uh, and I ride, you think he's not coming back? He's going to burn this damn house of hell. You take pride in this damn wicked nation. Come out of her. Don't allow her to train your babies. Don't allow your babies to be inspired by her. He said, I want the darkness to be my shah. I want it to be felt. I want them to know who, what's on me. I want to show you, Yisraya. I want it to be felt. And Moshe stretched forth his hand toward the heavens. And the Torah says there was a... Thick. There was an ahlah. It was thick. It was a covering. There was a thick cloud. Ahlah implies there was great calamity. And the wickedness of one's hearts is not, that's the season when men do wickedness. But a man or a woman entertain one another, do not they turn out the light? Talk to me. They don't want to see their sins and their corruption. They make the place dark. He said, there shall be an afalah, a darkness so wicked, the stench of wickedness it shall cover. It shall cover their minds, it shall cover them. That's what we're in today. Our children don't even know what's right and wrong. They think a faggot man is right. You understand? Hallelujah. 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 That's what they think is right, Yisrael. Miss Obama was quick to jump on this damn faggot basketball player that he called and congratulated him. He called the damn faggot to say, what a blessing. Miss Michelle Obama called the damn sissy and said, you are a great blessing. It's a great blessing that you open yourself up to that. And yet there are boys that are coming back home crippled for fighting a damn war. These damn wicked bastards uh, and these rich, dirty, damn dogs. Uh, these bastards of hell. Uh, and Michelle Obama is not calling one damn one of them. What a week they're called. But this damn filthy faggot they call him. You're killing your babies and you love America. Damn America. Bring your sons back crippled as hell. Uh, their minds messed up. Uh. Oh, America the beauty. She's a damn serpent. She's a snake. Damn her. I like those songs. Swing down, sweet chariot. Coming for the carry me home. Swing low. Y'all teach your children that. I'll come teach it now. If you They can sing it a cappella. Yeah, practice that. Swing down. You know that song? Sweet. You want to come sing it for everyone? You scared? You are fine. I'm glad you are. You're ashamed? You'll be ashamed? 
Yes, you would if you scared you. I'll sing it for you. Swing down the sweet chariots of Yah, coming ah, to carry me home. Swing low, oh, sweet chariot, come to take me to Jerusalem. That should be our song. Damn this filthy whore. I got to finish yet because there's Zakeh and Yerami, I would say there's much to this. And he stretched forth his hand, there was this Aphelah, this great darkness in all the land of Misraim, three days. Was there not darkness in the earth for three days when Yoshua, there was no light? As long as he was in the earth, he said, I am the Ma, oh, I am the, oh, I am the light of the earth. As long as are we not, did not Zakeh teach to us the different vessels, the earthen vessels? I'd rather be a simple earthen vessel. They're vessels of gold. You want to be a vessel of gold and a vessel of silver. You, you want to be the prize. Well, no, let me be an earthly vessel. He brought out the analogy and he brought it forth how the, how the earthen vessels are shaped by the clay and, and they're porous. Uh, and so in order for them to be able to hold water, they must be put in the kiln. Uh, and the heat intensifies. Uh, and if there is one bit of moist that is not drawn out, if, there's a, if there is a, a fault in the armor, it cracks. And then the second time the potter would uh, melt it down again, he would incorporate that with more clay. Uh, and if it broke again, as he taught that message to, uh, he would take it to the potter field because it was, it was not tough or nothing. He would throw it. That's what the potter field was for. That's why they buried Yahshua. They would send out. They, they took him. Even oh, 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 uh, 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 Yehuda, that betrayed him. Because he was good for nothing. Yeah, I use that word. He was a god, uh, but he was a damn god. He was not worth a damn thing. Uh, and your damn God is not worth a damn. No, I'm not going to stop using the word damn, you all. You got tender ears, just go some other place. I'm not cursing. I don't cause a kara to be upon the people of Yah. Hallelujah. I'm telling us what things are in our minds that we curse Him. We speak with a corrupt attitude toward Him. And that's just the truth. Hallelujah. So for three days and three nights... It says this in verse 23, and they saw not one another. That's darkness. Come on, man. When you can't see your ark, when you can't see your holt woman, something is wrong with you. You are damn twisted beast. You can't see one another. You have no spiritual open, no eye yet. You don't recognize your holt, your ark. Oh, Shimri comes over the other day. He comes when he gets back. I'm up on the roof now. That roof is high up there. That center part, that's about 12 feet. I know because I built the walls, man. So he comes over to see me. How you doing, Ray? I said, okay, I'm doing fine, man. And so uh, he said, okay, I'm going to run take care of some business. That's all right. I'll see you, my friend. So by that time, I got, enough, I got the tent on there just to keep the water from destroying that cheap paneling, man. And so I come down. I was soaking wet. Because I had been up, I had started working out there at 7 that morning. I had been over on the other side. I was working before 7, cutting 10. And, um, and so I was wet. And so he said, okay, I'll see you. So he started walking away, and I'm walking away. I said, come on. I said, Shemri, give me some love, baby. This you. Give me some love. He said, well, well, you know, I thought you were you, your wife. I said, man, come on, man. Give me some love. Give me some, man. Give me some feeling. Give me some love, man. And see the embrace, man, it solidified everything. You're right with me. Hallelujah. Come on, man. I don't want my mind to be so dark that I can't see my ark. It was so dark, listen, it says, uh, that they saw not one another, neither rose any man from his place for three days. You ever been in one of your moody funks that no one can, can uproot you from your moodiness and your wicked ways? I will, my friend. This is a generation of hypocrisy. Your little feelings got stomped on. They should get stomped on all the time. You are upset. 
You will not rise up out of that wickedness. That's what Hoshak is. It is the wickedness that blinds your mind and your eyes. But yet for your damn faggot son of your ho hop and daughter, you will, you will come up out of the damn wicked fucker. You see them, you put a smile on your damn big fat gritty face. Huh? Daddy looks at him. Oh, ha, ha, ha. I'm not holding nothing back. You see the brightness of Yisrael. You don't even rise up from your damn funk. You got a nuttiness about you. You need to retain. You need to contain it. And say, y'all deliver me. You don't want to be delivered. That's right, mama. I care for you. You're getting old. I think about you a lot. I say, she's getting old. I'm glad to see you walking. I see you all the time. I say, she's getting old. I see you running with the children. I say, I don't want to sing too much. Now because I don't want you to run out of breath. And I know the inevitable. And I want to do right by you. You have done right by me. Never caused me one ounce of trouble. And if you did, I would rebuke you before. Oh, you know that. She's getting older. Mine doesn't function as well as it was when she was younger. It's a fact, Mama. And I will protect her. How about that? So I think about her a lot. I think about her health. I think about her well-being. I do, Mama. I do. That's the truth. I said to Mahali, I said, I can call her, if I can call her anytime on the walkie talk, she answers. One of the only few. And I speak to us all to our shame. She can always get her. She hears. Not a time. May God strengthen you, old woman. Give you life. I want you to have life. It's not for the few pennies you get either. I will still do right for by you. And you know that. It says this, and they saw not one another, neither rose from his place. They stood there for three days. And the children of Yisraya had light in their dwelling. See, only the true children have light in their dwelling. There was a reason that Yah did that. You understand? I will show you now. I will show you from the book of Yesha. There was a reason that he did that. I think we, I know we know everything, but we don't know everything. That's why we need men that, that should be scholarly men. And if they, put, if they deal with one aspect of Torah, they should study that to the greatest of details to understand it. There was light. There was the witness that these were the sons of Yisra'ya. There was light in their dwelling. But look at the chronicle event that uh, Yesha gives us in the book of Yesha. It says in the book of Yesha, in the book of Jasper, in the 80th chapter, I want you to Read or hear this. Yes, sir. 8036. Uh, I want you to understand the depth of this darkness. Uh, there was darkness of the minds of Yisra. Yah were full of darkness. Uh, that's why when they came out, they sinned against Yah. Listen now. It says this in the book of Yes, sir, In the book of Jasher. It says in chapter 80 verse 36. And Yahweh sent darkness upon Misraim. And it said and the whole land. Of Misraim and Petrosa became Alata. It was darker. There was no light, Yisraya. Simply Alata means that it was covered with darkness. No light was there for three days. The light was in the earth for three days and three nights. Teaching that must be taught. Listen now. So that no man could see his hand. Your sure is the right hand of Yah. That's darkness. You can't even see what your own right hand is doing to you. How it's leading you down a crooked path of hell and darkness. You cannot, they cannot see their hand. When they lift it to their mouth. Now that's darkness. They cannot even see the print. They could see nothing. They cannot even see the hand when they lift it to, its, to their mouth. We can't even see the hand of your sure when it's lifted to us today. We don't even recognize the hand of Yahshua. 
We don't recognize it, Yisra'ya, because of the darkness, this Choshek. It says this in verse 7 now, 37, verse 37. At that time, at that time, that's why he calls the darkness. At that time, that's why there was Hoshak. At that time, y'all said, damn it, I'm going to kill you all. It says that many of the people of Yisrael, he went down with the sword of death. And he killed those of his own house. He did not want the witness to be against them among the Egyptians. So Yah said, I'll cloak it in darkness. And he's killing this damn wicked house today. Our minds are full of darkness. Our thoughts of darkness and our ways are steeped in damn darkness. Never he went down and killed them. He did not say the children of Israel. And at that time, died, Mavith. They died prematurely. Yah says, Mavith. He's saying that one dies because they reject the moral, the spiritual, intellectual counsel of Yah. And we reject that, don't we? What a man is often reproof, he stiffened his neck. He hardened his heart. Then destruction come upon that man suddenly. And, that's, and Yah doesn't want him no more. There's nothing more presumptuous than an old fool. A fool is a fool, but an old fool is a jackass. And the reason he's a damn old fool is because they're obstinate, they're hard-headed, and nobody can tell them a damn thing. You're caused the darkness, and the darkness is on this land, and many of the children of Israel are dying, and we don't even recognize it. We don't know they're dying. We, we worry about the Baptists and the Methodists, but the true house is dying. And many of the children of Yisra'ya, yeah, of Yisra'ya, yeah, died. Which ones died? Those that had Morad, are we a rebellious people? And the reason the word Morad means that because uh, there's an unbelief there. That's why Yahshua could do no mighty miracles. These damn dogs are not doing miracles today. Uh? There's no power of the land on our hands today, Yisra'ya. Yeah. Because they morad, because they rebel against Yah. And the reason you rebel because you don't believe. I don't, nobody's going to do anything to me. Can nobody do anything to me? I just watched my damn stupid sister, her son, 10, 12 years old. She ran away from her home because he said, don't touch me. If you do, I'll call the police. You stupid heifer. She runs away from home for three days. Don't call me. I'm not going to touch the damn fool. And look at the fat beast now. 400 some pounds. He's a pig. I don't care if they're listening to me. Of course, I talk to my natural sister this way. Shut your damn mouth. You're not here for me to listen to you. Can I read some more out here? Listen to this, my Akhnusibiyah. At that time died many of the people of Yisrael, not the Misraim, but Yisrael, who had Morat. They had fought against the light. When you rebel, you're fighting against truth. And you always fight against truth. Er, Talmer. Ain't hey, nobody telling me I'm a man like you, you damn boy. You don't know what a man is, at least you know I'm a man. They rebel against the light because they rebel against Yahweh. Listen now. Who will not listen to Moshe? I don't have to listen to nobody. They will not listen to Moshe and Haran and believe not in them that Yah has sent them. They didn't believe that Yah has sent them. He could do no mighty work because of their unbelief. This is a generation don't believe that a messenger is a man of Yah. That's why men always want to compare themselves. That's why they always want to be spiritual. You can show me how spiritual you are. Get with me one day and let's, let's, let's do the thing, baby. Yeah, talk like that. Let's do the thing, baby. Come work with me. Put on the word clothes, daddy. Put it on. Let's go to the garden for a day. I won't kill you. But you won't be able to get up the next day. Guarantee you that. They rebelled against Yah because they didn't believe that Moshe was sent by Yah. I don't need no man. I no more in Riach. I no more in Rukhi. Nobody tell me nothing. You're a fool, man. You are stupid. You're sure before he sinned, he descended, he gave gifts unto men. Everyone has not the gift. The Torah talks about a man that's a eunuch. He's a man that loves Yah. He's given a special gift of faith. 
That's keep doing what you're doing, son. Don't let no one tell you, well, you need a wife. I say to you, I say, if it's a right sister, she has to be the right woman. If it's yours, will. Don't let nobody tell you that. He gives the eunuch, and the eunuch represents one that has devoted himself to Yah. He gives them the special gift of faith. That's what it says in the book of Shirak. I'm going to teach on that message on Wednesday, all right? I want to show you all something. I get perturbed with the people because they don't call at a time. Yeah, I get, you get angry. Sure, I get angry. Don't I get angry? But it's one thing about the beauty of Yah that I, I don't allow it to rest in my bosom. Raphael, that, no baby doll. No girl. Uh. How are you doing? All right. <laughs> you run <laughs> it. Oh, come on, baby. Oh, girl. <laughs> Is he you laughing at me? You laughing? Yeah, I'm laughing. Silly thing. Come hug me. Hallelujah. I got to finish up here. You see, you're dealing with an honest man. He's just flat out honest. I've never abused my wife. I won't abuse her. I said to her the other day, I said, you know, you just use me, don't you? She said, no, I don't use you, Ray Ang. But I just know you're going to be faithful by me. So I asked her, I said, how much money you want when we take the trip? She says, mm, uh, $100. She says, okay. I give you a hundred. She said, we're not going anywhere. We can walk or catch the bus. I'm not going to sight see. I'm come, going there to bring sight to the blinded. Listen to this in Yeshua. Yeshua. It said, because in verse 7, because they did not believe in them that Yah had sent. He caused many to die. And it says in verse 38, And who had said, We will go forth from Misraim, unless we perish with hunger, and there is desolation shomim, this midbar, this wilderness of death. And they will not listen to the voice of Moshe. See, that's what corruption says. I will not hear the voice of Yahshua. Hamashiach. His voice that cries in the wilderness. Uh, we must hear the voice that cries in the bimitbar, the midbar. And because of that, it says, and Almighty Yahweh, he plagued this people. He naga. He plagued them. He struck them with death and sickness and death. And he plagued, this is Yana, and Yah plagued them uh, in the three days of darkness. See, he's plaguing this people today. We're in the last three days of darkness, of Hoshak. So we're sick, we're dying, we have no life of his testimony. Why is he doing that? Well, he tells us here. He plagued them three days, um, and Yisraya, or the Yisraelites, buried them in those days. For what reason? Without Misra, Misra without the Egyptians knowing of them, are rejoicing over them. So Yah did it that way so they will rejoice over them. He did that so the wicked when I say he brought them out, he killed them damn pigs. I knew they were pigs. No. So what he's trying to do to us in this dark season is kill us. That we impel the filthiness of our flesh in our Ruach Yisrael. Yeah. And we began to perfect the Ruach or the Chodash of Yah. Separating ourselves. He killed them. Because they morale, they rebel against his truth, they rebel against life. I don't want that light, but that ain't me. That is you, woman. That is you, man. You're wicked. We're ignorant. That is you. And he killed them in the midst of the darkness uh, that those of Egyptians, or the Egyptians would not know, uh, that they would say, look at them damn pigs. See, the same thing uh, happened to them. It's our God now. It's our God working on them. That's what he did. He killed them. And Yah says, bury them. That no one will know it. You better bury your damn sins. You better bury your corrupt ways. It better not rise up again. That no one will know. You got light today. Bury those damn dog ways and dog sayings. I'm not here to pontificate us. 
I don't know if that family there in Florida is listening. They're from Haiti. Of course, I don't know if they... She wrote me this morning and said she would be here and her and her husband would be in the service. Listen, uh, my language is crude. Uh, it's not polished like uh, T.D. Jakes and, and those men that mesmerize with our knob, with witchcraft, bewitching the minds of the people and the women. They sleep with the women every kind of way. These bastards are sleeping with the women. You understand? Taking their money, they're pipping them. That's all they're doing. I'm raw as they come. Because I'm as ignorant as they come. Hallelujah. So Yah says, I don't want them to rejoice over them. And verse 40, it says, And the darkness was very great in Misraim for three days. Listen to this now. This is how great the darkness was. Any person who was standing when the darkness came, they couldn't move. Remain. Can you imagine that fear and trepidation? When he come... Those that are filthy, you're filthy still. Oh, that's when he comes. No, he comes today. He comes today. He speaks to us today. And if the darkness is in your mind, you're going to stand in your damn wicked ways. Those that were standing, they remained standing in his place. And he that was sitting remained sitting. And those that were lying down continued to lie down in the same state. They didn't move. That's darkness. You're still lying in your sins and your corruption, your corrupt ways, your wicked ways, your attitude. That's what we're doing as a nation. They laid there. And it says this. And he that was walking remained sitting upon the ground. When the darkness fell, he said, which way I go? When you can't see nothing, he just sat down. Just sat down. Couldn't move. We sit down in the leaves of our wickedness and think we're right. I don't want to be like I was just that day. I don't want to be like I was this morning when I awakened. And don't tell me I can't. It's going to take this kind of cleansing to cleanse us. You can talk all you want to get together and, uh, and massage one another's little juvenile minds. Well, you know, I was reading all today, brother, and it said that. You can't even quote the damn, uh, the, 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 what you read. You can't quote a damn thing. You want to talk about it. You're silly man. People come and say, pull the book out. Now let's go to the book. No, 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 no. It says that. Well, well, you know, I, I thought, I know you thought. That's why you like to talk. One brother said, I tell you what, when you call Riyak, you better have the book ready. Because he's going to tell you that. Let's, oh, hold up, hold up. Let's go to the book. No, no, no. That's wrong what you're saying. I go to the book. To the safe fair. And so they go to the book of their ignorance, and both are ignorant, all are ignorant, so they just talk. Yeah, you know, brother, well, you know, I said, I saw that, and you know, y'all spoke to me. You're a liar. When y'all speaks to you, show me in a place where he's, when he speaks to his nation, it's always out of correction. Always. Anytime he speaks to you, he's correcting you. He's saying, you're a fool, man. Get your damn wicked heart right. Stupid man. If the Torah spoke to you in your reading, it's letting you know that you're not, uh, you're not up to that Pacific. So you don't need to share that to nobody. You live that Pacific. And others will see your light. You want to talk about light, you don't have no damn light in you. Shut your damn wicked mouth. I'm not afraid. And I don't back down too easy. Not me. Your hands are dirty. They're filthy with sin. Hallelujah. It says that they remain on the spot and the thing happened to all Misraim. Al Zakim Birmi always tell us we are, we, we are still in Misraim. We want the fresh pots. He said, You're still in Misraim, in Misra, in Egypt. He said, Until the darkness passes away. You're going to always be in Egypt until you get your mind right and your heart right with Yah. And the only way you're going to get that right is you must hear the Torah of Yah. You must be reproved. You must be refined, silly man. You immature old man, you immature young man, you silly old woman. There was a sister that wrote me and she sent me a picture too. She's a very attractive woman. Very attractive, what the world calls attractive. And she says to me, you're so fair in the preaching. You're honest. You deal with us as a people. She said, I haven't, I've sent offerings in the past and she has. She said, I found you all on YouTube. But what you're saying is so true. 
Because you don't, you don't spare anyone or anything. And it's right. I love this truth. You understand? We ought to get tired of being lied to and played with. You stop playing with yourself, man. Thinking you're wise. You're not wise. When a man is wise, you will see it in his eyes and his countenance. You will know wise man. I go places, people know me. They don't know me, but they know me. Hallelujah. I don't care if I got on dirty jeans. I don't care what I wear. It's the same thing. Hallelujah. I don't have to show them how my waist is and how masculine I am. I'm masculine. I'm a man. Don't have to do that. Well, you use you because you use you as well. You think of you as well. If you don't like me, you're not in bad company. Your daddy the devil, he doesn't like me either. So you have your damn daddy the devil, the shot damn. So if you don't like me, don't, don't feel bad. They will sing old song, devil, your kingdom coming down. They were lashing out at him, the more spiritual one. You've been building your kingdom. All over this land, devil, oh, oh, hush your tongue. Your kingdom is coming down. He's been building his kingdom word by word in our stupid, ignorant minds. I speak to all Yisra'ya, and I am Yisra'ya, and I'm glad he talks to me this way. I'm glad. I'm glad he coaches me by his truth. Let me move on because I want to close. I want to make sure that our minds are ready for Shabbat, next Shabbat, this week. But let, let me give you this kingdom that Misraim, it was a powerful kingdom. Yah raised it up. He raised up Pharaoh for one thing, to get honor upon his name, right? There's a kingdom that shall be, it is called the fourth kingdom. It is the mighty kingdom. It is the culmination. You ask these wise old men today, what is that kingdom consist of? They don't know a damn thing. They can talk generically, but I talk precisely. It is the culmination of the Roman entity, the Medio Persian, the Babylonian. Uh, it is the culmination of the Egyptian ruling power, and it shall be culminated into this kingdom. There was an army that speaks precisely at what shall be the identity of this kingdom. Uh, America's coming down. She's the dirty slut. She's the wicked slut. It says in Revelation, Gilead Nam. You bear with me, whether you bear with me or not, I'm going to finish. Revelation chapter 16. And this is what Yah is doing with us today. Revelation chapter 16 verse 8. He says, I saw the fourth Melech pour out his vial, his, uh, his vial upon the sun. And power was given to him to scorch men with fire. What fire? Well, you know the fire is still right. Where the sun doesn't rise, it's going to cause uh, the men to be scorched, to be burned with the fire of his word. This burns down uh, to the depths of your nephesh. This makes you mad here. This doesn't make us happy. He said, and men were scorched with great heat. Uh, and this is what they did. They began to knock up. They began to blaspheme. They began to gad off. They began to revile Yah. They speak against him. They didn't let you with Moshe. Who has made you ruler? Who has given you the hand? He said, I'm just like you. I know what you know. I, that's, that's insulting to me to say that to you. I wouldn't even insult myself like that. I wouldn't even insult myself to say I know what you know. I don't need to know what you know. I need to know what I know for me. You understand? It says that, uh, and they blasphemed the name of Yahweh, uh, which had power over these plagues, uh, and they repented not uh, to give him Kabo. They did not repent to give him honor. And it says that the fifth milach, he put out the vial upon the seat of Nahash, the kingdom. That's what Yah's doing. He's pouring out the vial upon this Nahash, this rebellious spirit that's in Yisra'ya. They cause us to marad against the light. He poured out the vial upon Nahash, this vile beastly kingdom. And it says when he poured out the vial, his kingdom was full of darkness. It was full of ignorance. It was full of Hoshak. 
It was full of misery and destruction. That's what it was full of. It was full of darkness. To what degree? That even the men they gnawed on their tongue for pain. They're trying to answer with their lotion and they have no answer. His kingdom. Our minds are full of darkness. Because the vial of darkness, because we have morad, we have rebelled against the light, the testimony of Yeshua. Come on, Yisrael, has sent Yeshua to deliver us. Our minds are not on Yah. We don't think about Yah. We don't meditate. We don't lahai. We don't not meditate on the word day and night. Because uh, if you're meditating, uh, some of the most trying circumstances uh, will cause the ma or the light of rejoicing to shine forth. Uh, and when you don't meditate on the Torah, someone says something to you. The Torah talks about a woman uh, who has not the love of Yah, the wisdom of Yah. And when you speak to that woman, her face turns like the damn face of a bear. That's what Shirak says. And your face turned like an ignorant damn fool. I don't take it back, man. You can't make me. When I was a kid, they said, take it back. I won't fight you. I ain't taking it back. You don't take it back, I'm going to punch you. I ain't taking it back. You better take it back. Well, I'm thinking back, I'm thinking back. <laughs> no, I'm not taking it back. Let's fight. I'm a warrior. I'm not taking it back. Well, you stepped on my toe. No, I'm ripping your damn wicked heart out. I'm not trying to step on your fat foot. I'm trying to kick the door of that wicked heart in. Hallelujah. They gnawed on their tongue. Verse 11. Again, as I read in Shemoth, how they blaspheme in the book of Yeshua, how they blaspheme the name of Yah. It says here, and they, and they blaspheme Omari Yahweh of the heavens because of their pains and their sores, and they repented not of their deeds. Now, we think that God off is that we're speaking against his name. Blaspheming is this. When we don't repent of our deeds, we will not accept, just like they did not, they rejected Moshe and Haran. We resist and reject the very order of Almighty Yahweh. And we think we're going to rush into his throne and say, no, you're going to get me. And I said, no, Yah has a protocol. And he's not going to change anything for an unfaithful pig like I am or you. You think he's going to do that? You're a damn fool, man. Woman, sit down. Sit down. You have no position in his kingdom. All flesh is as grass. Our flesh die. Is it appointed unto every man will sit down then the judgment? We better prepare ourselves for the death that come. That this flesh shall cease from this earth. Silly old man thinking about your damn lust. You old silly woman trying to entertain your silly lust. You damn near 90. You ought to have your mind on your sure how much you Let your light so shine. That's what you need. Hallelujah. I can do all things. The Torah of Yah that gives me strength. Sometimes I am so weak. I don't know what to do. He guides me to his Torah. And restores my nefesh. He shows me the tree of life. That I may eat on, oh, beautiful is your shoe. See, I, I don't know the words, but I just sing. I just sing what's in me. I guarantee if I had wanted to be a songwriter or something like that, I could be a wealthy man. That's a fact. I could have been a wealthy man just writing songs. I know that in this natural life, as far as my position, now I have no position, as far as an identity with what the world calls success, I could be far from here. I'd rather do like Moshe. I'd rather suffer with the few of us than to enjoy the pleasures of this wicked world for a season. They don't have friends out there in this dog world. I'd rather suffer with my ach, my achim, my chuchim. I'd rather suffer with you. And I'm not suffering at all. As long as I can work, I'm all right. Let me move to close out here. Hallelujah. 
We don't repent of our deeds, yes, sir, I am. Hallelujah. There's no great delight, delight to walk. We must understand that there's a way that we must halak, we must walk and go in. Yoshua gives us a prime example here in the book of John, Yakahanan. He gives us the light whereby we must walk in. That we can have belief. John chapter 12 verse 35. Yoshua answered because he knew that the day would come. He says, yet a little while is the light with you. See, just a little while. That's why there are no great miracles. We are in the layil, in the hushak of darkness. I don't care what these damn liars say. They can convince you, but they're not convincing me. Oh, I lay hands on folks and that woman had a demon. Huh? Oh, that's just part of the, the order. <laughs> Spit like a nasty heifer. Oh, that slava out of your mouth. Stop that cow. So big fat beast of a man flopping like a buffalo. Get up, man. They're not casting out demons, Yisrael. Then after the service over, he's over there still seeing who he can hound, big as he is. That's a fact. She's going back to her damn wicked ways. Huh? Yoshua said to them, yet a little while is the light with you. See, just a little while. We're in the world, but we're not of the world. Just a, he said, walk while you have the light. Did they walk in the light? Sure they did. And we saw how the darkness began to come in as they walked. Uh, as the generation proceeded. They went back to the same ways, Yisrael. And if we don't keep the light before us, we'll constantly go back to our same uh, vile, wicked ways. Uh, we we'll find ourselves doing things we ought not do. There are those that are doing things that once lived here. They were, they're doing things that are so vile that they had never done in all of their lives where they're doing it now. Yeah. And that's a fact. And don't think that you are immune from that. You will do the same thing. Uh, he says, walk while you have the light. Least the whole shall come upon you. Uh, for he that walk in darkness knows not where he goes. When a man walk in darkness, he doesn't know where he's going. There's only one light. And the Torah is precise on that. Can I give you the remedy of that? Uh, that's why the enemy keeps you away from Torah. It says this in Mishli, in Proverbs. I know what it says in Proverbs chapter 6, verse 23. It says, for the mitzvah is a lamp. It is the near. In e e r, not in e a r. It is the near. He says, and the Torah is light. And the Torah is light. We must walk in the Torah. And then he tells us, and reproof of instruction are the ways of life. Reproofs. And any time there's no reproofs of instructions to you, you're not in the way of life. That's the way of life. His Torah is the light. We must walk in the Torah. We must halak, strive to enter into the wisdom of the Torah. Enter ye in at the straight gate. For broad and wide is the gate that enter to destruction. And many be there that go in thereat. We must enter in the refinements of the Torah. And the Torah refines us. That's a fact. I want to give us a consolation out of all this. And I'll continue on on next Shabbat. There's more scripture I have. But I want to read this. As we come to the climactic end. That this Torah may deal with you and examine you. Shaul gives us a tremendous inspiration here as he prays for the elect, the scattered ones. There in Colishia, as he writes unto the house of Yisraya, Colossians chapter 1. It would be beautiful to read all of that. But because of time, I want to read a few verses yet, a couple. He's speaking to them because his desire and prayer, Colossians chapter 1, verse 12, for them to grow spiritually. But he speaks to their brevity and his great concern for them. This should be our great concern for Yisrael. I'm not trying to prove what you are. I'm not proving nothing to no man. 
he speaks like this in Colossia, Colossians 1.12. He said, first of all, give Torah to Yah, the Abba. Give Torah. Give Yada. Praise him with your voice. He said, who, who has made you fit to be partakers of the inheritance of the Israelite, of the Israelite Kirushim of light? We are made to be partakers of the light of truth. Even in the midst of the darkness, y'all said, I kill you in darkness. Uh, so the world is just full of death. We're in that darkness. And that's no thought of you dying today or me dying today. Uh, because there's darkness here. He says, uh, give Torah Yah for one reason. He has delivered us from the power of darkness. Who yeah. fell from spiritual uh, unreceptiveness. Uh, we must be able to receive the truth. He has delivered us from that spiritual unreceptiveness. Uh, and then he has shabab. He has translated us into the kingdom of Yahshua Hamashiach. We are the mind, the ruach, the spirit, Yisrael. He has delivered us out of darkness. And translated us and brought us into the kingdom of Yahshua Hamashiach. And to give us the beauty of that translation... Shirak says in my closing, Enoch 44, in the book of Shirak 44, 16, he says, Hanach, please Yah. When we please him, he translates us. He pleased Yah. And he was translated. He was an example of repentance to all generations. That's our example. That's our example. He was translated that he should not see death. Isn't that beautiful? That's so beautiful. That's why there must be line upon line, line upon line, precept upon precept, here a little, there a little. He should not give this unto uh, those that are sucking babes. He give this unto warriors and men of strength. You both say, no, I'm just a warrior. No, I'm a warrior. I know that. Just like you know your Yisra'ya. May Yah's riches rest upon you all. You that have joined us for this gathering here, this service, we do greet you all. Your surest name, may his riches be upon you all. May his strength overpower your heart. May the riches of your rest upon you all. May he strengthen you all and may your hearts be encouraged. May he lift you up in the light of his Torah. Be blessed in your surest. Hallelujah. What a wonderful word that Almighty Yahweh has blessed us with this day. And he blessed us with his word every day. Yisrael Yah. He woke us up this morning. He gave us breath in our bodies, life. That is his Torah. That is his word, Yisrael Yah. Hallelujah. So we barack him for that, for his mercy, for his love and kindness, and for his patience with the house of Yisrael Yah. Let us do what it takes, Yisrael Yah. If, you, if we really ahava and we love Yah, as we declare we do, Yisrael Yah, we will do what it takes. No matter how hard the press or how simple the act may be, we would do it wholeheartedly. And it's not, it shouldn't be something that we have to be pressed to do, but we should desire and have a love to do what Yahweh commands us to do. And it's for our own enlightenment, it's for our own strength, Yisrael, that we may endure unto the end of all things. Hallelujah. So let us stand to our feet. This beautiful day that Yahweh has made. Let us rejoice. Let us be, be glad in it, Yisrael. Hallelujah. Little shoe, let us turn to Jerusalem. Almighty Yahweh, we barack you for another day that you have given us. We turn to you, Yahweh, for your word that you have sent, Abba Yahweh. For you truly know what we need, Abba Yahweh, even before we ask Almighty Yah. We do barack you for all things we ask you to touch those that are listening by via live stream. And those that may not have even heard this word, Abba Yahweh, let it be sent unto them, Abba Yahweh. Let them know, Abba Yahweh, that you are within them by the Ruach of your Torah. And all things we do barack you, take those that have come from near and afar home safely. In the mighty name of Yahshua HaMashiach, we do declare, Hallelujah! 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 Yahweh. Hallelujah! Yahweh. Hallelujah. 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 Hallel